You know, something I've noticed recently is that whenever some people decide to make a video response to me or make a video about me and they try to paint me as an asshole, they for some odd reason always pick some of the most benign videos I have made to do so, which I think is ridiculous. I mean, let's be honest here, I can be quite the fucking dick to some people that I video respond to. And some other people I've been to respond to, I'm, you know, I'm just challenging their ideas. I'm not doing it to be mean to them, and I don't even insult them. I just read what, what they say. You know, you know, simple stuff sometimes. And again, I, I, I'll be the first to admit, sometimes I can be quite the fucking dick to some people, right? But, but, but here's the thing, you know, whenever people try to paint me out to be a douchebag or an asshole, they use, again, they pick the most benign video to use. Let's take Pretty and Primp, for example, you know, Pretty and Primp takes her fucking video response, you know, to me about slut shaming, and she's like, oh my goodness, he's brutally assaulting me, not, not assaulting me, brutally harassing me, which was a bold-faced lie. Essence of Thought. When I originally made the video response to Essence of Thought, I was trying to be a little more friendlier to him, you know, but then again, he takes one of the most benign videos I have made and tried to use it to paint me as an asshole. Now, this guy, Hannibal. So, the funny thing about Hannibal is, I had watched some of his videos a couple of times, and I had always wondered, due to his subject matter, how come he's never made a video, you know, including me in it, or a video response to me? Well, it turns out my intuition is quite powerful, because he did make a video response, well, not a video response to me, but he featured one of my videos in his video. And as it turns out, the video he decided to use was a video response I made to Grace. Do you guys remember Grace? She was that little cute girl that had the low-cut shirt on that showed off half her boobs. Yeah, I didn't insult Grace in that video. I just rebutted the things she said and just explained some things to her. It's fucking crazy that he picked that video. I mean, he could have used a video response, any video response I made to, to Lacey Green, or he could use a video response I made to Jacqueline Glenn, because fuck Jacqueline Glenn, right? But no, no, he picks the video response to Grace. So let's see what Hannibal has to say about that video. Ladies and gentlemen, and yet more postcards from the Manosphere, I am coming to you from deep behind enemy lines at Camp Slapaho, formerly Camp Nipisaki in lovely New Hampshire. Today I bring you various types of misogyny, foolhardiness, and stupidity from the Manosphere, so let us proceed with our discussion of the matters at hand. Something that I've noticed has come up since this whole uh, celebrity hack, and it's something that has happened over and over again, to which I have actually had to reevaluate uh, just recently, is the idea of shaming promiscuity in women. Now, in a little while, we're going to see just how much this happens. And also, I want to make very clear to people here that when we're having this discussion, unfortunately, this is actually a discussion about men, believe it or not, and how men perceive certain things. Uh, so we will move forward with this particular observation at present. So what are we actually talking about? Well, we're talking about what many sex-positive feminists would identify as slut-shaming. Now, whether you like that terminology or not, that's actually what's going on here. And in the course of my perusing the manosphere in the interweb machine for prime material to try and demonstrate just how ridiculous these concepts really are. I stumbled across this little gem. I will link in the low bar the video this belongs to and the gentleman who is making this video. I will also, which he did not do, link to the original video by this young lady named Grace who was talking about this subject matter. <laughs> but, <clears throat> excuse me, it is a jumping off point for what uh, I want to discuss here and point out to people so that they understand why something like this is problematic. So, let's proceed with the first clip and, well, you'll see what happens. Uh, hi everybody, my name's Grace. Hi Grace. Mm. Hi Grace. Now, to provide a bit of context for people who have not seen that video response I made to Grace, the reason why I made the little quip with a joke about Grace showing off cleavage was for a couple of reasons. One, to show that cleavage, especially for teenage boys who are going through puberty, can be distracting. And two, to point out the fact that it was a conscious decision that Grace made. That's the point, that Grace was consciously showing off her cleavage for whatever reason. That's why I made the quip. There's a little teasing thing. I wasn't, I wasn't making a statement that Grace was a slut. There's no way to ascertain that information based on her attire. However, I can say that it's probably, yeah, yeah, it's probably a very conscious decision that she made. That was the point of the fucking joke. Continue. Okay, now the particular jumping off in context for this discussion, as I already iterated, was slut shaming, and this young lady Grace was pointing out to the hypocrisy involved with ideas concerning dress codes in school. In other words, that the dress codes in schools tend to 
predominantly come down harder on women than they do on men. And the reason that's why that is, is quite simple actually. The reason why is because the dress code violations seem to affect women more than it affects men. Because women use their bodies to obtain attention passively, while men usually obtain attention actively. Okay, so most women try to show off their skin to gain attention from boys because they can't do it actively, as in going up and just talking to them or doing something. That's why, because most women are more prone to dress sexually than men are. I mean, dressing sexually for men is actually normally showing off that you have a lot of money to spend. It's not normally being very revealing because women aren't attracted for men for being men. They're more so attracted to men because of what men can provide for them. Being point of fact, at least. The idea behind this are the classic myths of concerning things like sexual assault, uh, sexual assault and rape. In other words, that if a woman is wearing something, doing something, saying something, looking something, acting something, breathing something, you name it, she is inviting the possibility of an attack happening. Now, I have said several times in the course of making these YouTube videos that you cannot ask to be raped and that no one really deserves to be raped. Pointing out a woman's dress code and saying that it can be distracting is not saying that she's inviting rape. It is saying that it's fucking distracting. Now, the excuse that's often given for this kind of thing is that it's distracting. Now, I'll get to that here in a minute, but I want to point out in this particular subject here, uh, who is making this response to this young lady, he has immediately uh, dismissed her argument and everything about her argument as being irrelevant and down to nothing more than her special pleading. You know, if I had actually did that, there would have been no video response to be made because I would have dismissed everything she said. Dumbass. And instead of actually paying attention to what she says in this video, by the way, and I'll read some of the comments from this video when we get to that particular section of this, uh, they simply disregard her because she is showing cleavage. Broski, did you watch the entire video? I think you disregarded me because of the quip that I made about Grace's breasts. I don't think that I was the one disregarding what Grace was saying, because if I did, I would not have been able to make the rebuttals to her arguments, because I would have dismissed it all. I mean, come on, dude. They don't pay attention to a damn thing that she says. This is the kind of thing that women hate. In other words, they don't like being disregarded simply because of what they're wearing. Now, interestingly enough, if you look at the subject matter of this particular comment section, there is insistence that this young lady is nothing more than a dumb slut, but she managed to outwit all of these collective assholes here by simply using uh, basically a prop, and that is her cleavage. She proved her point. So you're telling me that Grace purposely was showing off her cleavage? That kind of justifies the reason why I brought attention to it in the first place. And it kind of shows that women sexually objectify themselves, too. It also shows that women have a level of agency. Look, I can go on and on all fucking day based on that whole thing that Grace purposely used her body to prove a point. Continue, though. By simply wearing something that was a little uh, low cut. Uh, they completely ignored everything that she said, and they had no interest in what she was actually trying to convey to them. And once this was done, her opinion, her ideas, in fact, her very legitimacy were completely disregarded, and we'll see that in the comments. And this gentleman here is actually showing that particular aspect of this. Fuck you. Oh, fuck you, fuck you. Fuck you, fuck you. Uh, he's immediately drawing attention to the fact that she's wearing something that is fairly revealing, or not fairly revealing, it's kind of revealing. Yeah, yeah, that was, it was very revealing. And it was a distraction I greatly appreciated. <laughs> Which reduces him to the state of, wow, look at those boobs which is exactly the kind of thing she's trying to talk about here. Henceforth, why I did it. But you guys failed to understand that. So, let's proceed. 
Okay, so my rant is about like slut and whore shaming. What's so bad about being a slut or a whore anyways? Um, STDs, unwanted pregnancy, lack of respect from your peers. Okay, this is what, after watching this uh, this video, I had to come to reevaluate, reassess, and come to an epiphany of that I want to discuss with everybody now. Uh, as we're all well aware, people like Thunderfoot, Richard Dawkins, and various other people throughout the manosphere try to mansplain to women various aspects of what their behavior are doing. To them. That wasn't mansplaining you doofus, that was answering her question. It's framed in a very paternalistic idea of concern and desire to protect women from harm. Yeah, but you do understand the natural inclination of men has always been to protect women. Actually, I don't think you understand that, otherwise you wouldn't have said what you just said. When in fact, that's actually not what's going on here. What's going on here is a bunch of condescending bullshit that we will now attempt to untangle. Well, Hannibal, you did write the book on how to be a condescending asshole, so... Yeah, that probably is exactly what's going on, and I just didn't realize that. ...and show it for what it actually is. Just as when Thunderfoot is complaining about women being raped because they're wearing certain things, they're drinking, they're going out in public, they're daring to have contact with their fellow human beings, and if they didn't do all these things, wouldn't get raped. Actually, all of that was a boldface lie. Um, Thunderfoot was saying that you can reduce your chances of getting raped based on how you decide to present yourself or what you decide to do to help minimize those chances. And then he was saying that it could still actually happen. Now look, listen, I'm not the biggest fan of Thunderfoot, but I can agree when he's being logical or when his arguments make sense. There's some things I disagree with him on and some things I can agree with him on, and that's one of the things I agree with, because he's right, you can minimize those chances. It doesn't mean that it's still not going to happen though. But again, link to Thunderfoot's video will be in the description box. I do realize how absurd that is, but then again, Thunderfoot is kind of an absurd person. Uh, also, this kind of stuff is demonstrated by people like Dean Esme, Paul Elam, John the Other, uh, all these idiots that are a part of places like the Voice for Men and other, uh, dare I say, uh, men's rights, but are actually men's supremacy movement sites that encourage this kind of thing. And this is what this kind of paternalistic bullshit you're seeing right now. Now, this young lady, Grace, is pointing to the fact that what is wrong with a woman going out and having sex and part be having partners and uh, being able to enjoy herself physically as much as a man? The answer to this question simply is there isn't anything wrong with that. I mean, do you have selective hearing? You posted the answer to that question that I made personally in your video, and then you go on to say that there's nothing wrong with it, clearly understanding that it is possible to get unwantedly pregnant, and that it is possible to contract STDs, and it's possible to get attached to someone that you never really wanted to get attached to in the first place? You saw the vi- Forget it. Just forget it. But immediately you have this uh, wall thrown up that's being done by this, what is this gentleman's name, by the way? It is, uh, I apologize, Bass, F-Z-Z, -Z, I will- And that is how you correctly pronounce my username, for anyone that was confused. A link to the uh, offending video in the low bar, therefore everybody can go and check it out for themselves. Uh, now, to get you an idea about just how prevalent and how ridiculous this kind of stuff is. Let's read some of the comments from below. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Ace says, and I quote, This stupid bitch is complaining about slut shaming when she herself is showing off a hint of her cleavage throughout the entire video. Uh, remember how I talked about earlier that they're disregarding everything she says and just concentrating on her appearance? This is what I'm talking about. Uh, he says, Piffed, and these stupid bitches wonder why uh, they're not taken seriously. If you dress and act like a slut, then you better expect to be, tre uh, to be treated like, to, 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 for people to treat you like one. Now, granted, I don't really think Ace should have insulted Grace, you know. However, there was truth in his comment, and he's absolutely right. If you're going to dress provocatively or dressed in a manner that makes you look like a prostitute or that brings attention to your sexual organs or to your breasts or to your ass, then you're going to get treated a certain way. He's right. Ace was absolutely freaking right. The way you dress is going to influence the way you get addressed. It's just that simple. Being a slut or a promiscuous woman is a negative thing, yet women want to be ridiculed for being sluts, uh, or don't want to be ridiculed for being sluts and wear the label of slut as a badge of honor. How fucking pathetic. 
Uh, another one, uh, let's see, uh, one asking what a size or bra is, very, very classy boys. Uh, let's go for, oh, here's another one from somebody named Sharpful, or, sh yeah, Sharpful. Uh, why don't we all just stop beating around the bush and just say it? Women have, who have meaningless sex indiscriminately with many different partners just don't have the same sexual value of women who are selective with who they're sleeping with. Uh, this is nothing to be ashamed about. It's how masculinity is evolved. And because I'm running low on memory and patience, I'm going to end the video right there. So, uh, yeah, Hannibal, you could have picked a much better video to make me look like a douchebag. Not sure why you picked this one. That being said, I certainly hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, man, go ahead and click that like button. Go ahead and click that. Subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below. And as always, have a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.